All right, hello and welcome to the one class um, popular math questions. My name is Richard and today we're going to be going over 10 questions. If you require any more help um, or tutoring, please be sure to check out the links in the description below. So with that being said, let's get to our problem set for today. All right. So first question, number one, if a polynomial function f of x has roots 3 and root 7, what must also be a root of f of x? So we have to understand what having roots of 3 and root 7 mean. Basically, this means that our polynomial can be written as the product of certain factors, right? So let's say you have roots a and b of a quadratic equation for example right and we know that a quadratic equation is some some um, equation in the form of um, let's use different letters ex squared plus fx plus uh, g right and we know that we can possibly factor this into the product of two terms if there if we have two roots so with that being said ultimately if this equation has roots a and b then we can write it as x minus a times x minus b. And this would still be the same equation, but now it's written in a factorized form. So essentially what this means is that um, our polynomial function having roots 3 and root 7 can also be written as the product of x minus 3, because that's one of the roots, and then because we are dealing with a root 7 here, right, um, this essentially means that our, our term, our second term would have to be x squared minus 7, right? Because when we set this equal to 0 and actually find what our roots are, plugging in root 7 into here would give us 7 minus 7, which then gives us 0. So this is basically our factorized form of our polynomial function, f of x. And what the question is asking is what must also be a root of f of x. So we know that, um, we know that 3 is definitely a root of this uh, term resulting from this term. What we also can realize right here is that whether we plug in positive or negative root 7, this term still becomes 7 minus 7 at the end of the day. So with that realization, we could say that our third root is negative 7. So that must also, as a consequence to positive root 7 being one of our roots, um, minus the square root of 7 is also one of our roots. So this is what the answer would be for this question. And let me just check what has been done here and yeah this is essentially the same thing here a little bit more of shorthand um, I went into more detail so this is correct great job and with that being said we can move on to the second question